All right, good afternoon, everyone. It is five after one, and I'm going to call in session the City of Rancho Mirage, City Council, Library and Observatory Board, Housing Authority Board, and the City Council representing the Redevelopment Successor Agency. This regular meeting, Thursday, October the 6th, 2022, at one o'clock. We are now in session, and with that, We'll do the flag salute, and I'm going to ask Mr. Gabe Cotting to do that for us. Thank you, Mayor. Please stand. Let me begin. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, liberty and justice for all. Thank you, Gabe. Appreciate that. Moving along, next we're going to have the roll call. Again, we're going to ask um, our um, Kate. Let me see here. Our, there you are, Katie. How you doing, Chrissy? Council Member Downs. I'm here. Council Member Smotrich. Here. Council Member Weil. Here. Mayor Pro Tem Kite. Is Mayor Townsend. Absent. Mayor Townsend? I am here. And with that, I will call for a motion to excuse Mayor Pro Tem Kite's absence. May I have a motion? So moved. Somebody seconded, I will. Second, oh, go ahead. All right, and next, uh, Mr. Gabe Cotting is filling in for our city manager. So, and that takes care of that. Next on the agenda is a presentation by the Rancho Mirage High School band and orchestra and presentation of a proclamation naming the Rancho Mirage High School band and orchestra the official band of Rancho Mirage. With that, I'm introducing you to Mr. Bryant McDaniel, director of the bands and instrumental music at Rancho Mirage High School. Bryant, there you are. Mayor, council, thank you for having us. Um, this is my fourth year at Rancho Mirage High School. We were hoping to come in a little bit earlier, but Corona happened, but <laughs> <laughs> I'm proud to mention what the accomplishments of my students. This is a microcosm of the best students at Rancho Mirage High School. We have athletes, we have people in all various clubs in addition to band. The kids before you have an overall GPA higher than 3.5 collectively, and many of them have over 4.0. Um, we work hard. We work very hard to represent our school and to represent our wonderful city. We thank you for sponsoring us and supporting us and allowing us to perform for you today. And we'll be playing our fight song. Uh, the chorus is Rancho Mirage. You probably could dig it. Very uh, good. Take it away. <laughs> to the podium, we have a presentation for you guys. And Iris Matridge, Councilwoman, will present it. Thank well, you. thank you, Mr. Mayor. And and thank, thank you, all of you. That was absolutely amazing. Thank you for all the hard work you have done and continue to do. And uh, it's so nice to see you all out and, 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 and visiting us. And we're very honored with all the, all the presentations you make. So I have a, pro a proclamation here. 
and it says, Honoring Rancho Mirage High School Band and Orchestra. And I'll just read a couple of the whereas, whereas's. Whereas the Rancho Mirage High School Band program was established in 2013, and whereas the high school student musicians put in countless hours practicing their instruments and helping one another, and whereas many of the program's students continue to study music after high school, and whereas the Rancho Mirage High School Band and Orchestra earned top honors at the 2022 Anaheim International Heritage Music Festival and were invited to attend the 2023 Hollywood International Heritage Music Festival. And whereas the band program was invented to perform in invited to perform in several locations in Japan, and hope to travel there in the summer of 2024. And it is now my pleasure to name the Rancho Mirage High School Band and Orchestra the official band of Rancho Mirage. And I congratulate you on behalf of the entire council. And I have a lovely proclamation here for you. And I shall come down and bring it to you. Wonderful. Could I have my principal and our superintendent join us up here for this picture? And Ms. Cornette, can you join us as well? You're, she's a board member with Palm Springs Unified. So it'd be wonderful. Well, it's good to have her here also. Yeah. And see, now, now we know why we should have played an instrument. <laughs> <laughs> I'm so sorry I didn't learn. And uh, you're a wonderful representation of the youth that we have in our world today. And we're so proud that you're in Rancho Mirage. So I will hand to you this proclamation. Perhaps we can get up. A photo op? Oh, absolutely. A photo op. <laughs> How about, okay, we're all here. Sure. <laughs> Again, thank you so much. We congratulate you. We wish you all the very best. Thank you so much. You're welcome, and, and only good health and happiness, and all your longevity in the musical field. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you. All right. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Mr. Mayor, on behalf of uh, Richard Kite, who is not here, I merely want to say, go Rattlers. <laughs> very good. Great, uh, great high school. Very proud of that Rancho Mirage. It's come a long way. I remember being there when we stuck the shovel in the ground for the beginning of that great, great high school, and it has just grown and grown, and I'm very, very proud of it. Thank you. With that, and thank you, Iris, for doing that. My pleasure. Thank you. We're moving on to our next presentation is a Rancho Mirage Preservation Update by Melissa Ritchie and a Preservation Mirage Board member. And she's going to talk to us. R Melissa, welcome back. Thank you. Nice to see you again. Nice to see you too. It's lovely to see everyone's smiling faces in person instead of just on Zoom. Good, um, good afternoon, Mr. Mayor, Council members, Gabe Codding. Um, Preservation Mirage is hopefully going to be coming up on the screen in a minute. Oh, we've gone too far. There we go. Okay. Uh, Preservation Mirage is celebrating its fifth year as a non-profit 501c3 organization. Founded in late 2017, we now have more than 600 members. We've doubled in the last year. With a revised and expanded website, you can see a page up on your screen, that delves deeper into Rancho Mirage's history, we continue to expand our offering to the community through education and advocacy. Our mission is to celebrate the architectural history of Rancho Mirage by promoting its protection and appreciation. 
our organization is about community. It's for the community as, as well. And so we would really like for the community of Rancho Mirage to play an even bigger role. We welcome volunteers to any of our newly formed seven committees from events to education. You can sign up on our website at preservationmirage.org. Our membership grew substantially during the pandemic, thanks to nine entertaining and informative preservation sessions that we hosted live via Zoom from, with topics from Sunny Lands to the architecture of William F. Cody. These are all now available on YouTube and you can access those from our website. Continuing in the education theme, this November we will be hosting our next preservation session via Zoom on the topic of how to research your home's history. This is something that I get asked about all the time and um, we did do a seminar at Rancho Mirage Library a few years ago. It was uh, sold out, so we're going to be doing an update of that for everybody. I provide useful tips and free research tools and more and members can sign up free to this event starting today. As you may recall, last year, Preservation Mirage launched the first ever architecture map of the city that was sent to all Rancho Mirage residents. Our board member, Bob Berg, made a presentation to you, I'm sure you remember. The map is still available to Rancho Mirage visitors and residents, both here at City Hall and the Rancho Mirage Library and Observatory. It's also available as a digital download on our website for a donation of only $5. Next year, the map will also feature interactive content on our website. We are engaging the real estate community through information exchanges and tailored events that are coming up and help local agents understand the power of preservation and architectural history to benefit sellers and buyers alike. As you know, the last two years were a dynamic period for real estate in Rancho Mirage. We've noticed a significant uptick in people moving here specifically to enjoy the mid-century architecture, including a couple of our own new board members. We are working <clears throat> on a welcome mailer to be sent to all new residents, and you can see a sample of it on the screen. We're very happy to have a letter from Mr. Mayor as the introduction to that mailer, and we'll be updating that when, when your replacement comes in, Mr. Townsend. Um, and this mailer will not only inform people about Preservation Mirage, but will include the architecture map, a history of the city, and a mayor's message that includes a link to the city's many public services and programs. A few days ago, Preservation Mirage announced four new membership tiers in addition to the free quarterly email newsletter that we send out. These are designed to support our advocacy and education goals while providing members enhanced access to seminars, events, tours, receptions, and other benefits. And of course, you can sign up on our website, preservationmirage.org slash membership. Um, in fact, very surprisingly to me, uh, we've had a lot of people sign up for membership already, and um, we've had more people sign up at the preservationist $1,500 level than we have at the $50 level. So I think that speaks uh, volumes about the interest and enthusiasm that we have in Rancho Mirage for, for uh, preservation and architecture. We are also excited to reintroduce in-person events this is something I'm sure you're all excited to do. And our season kickoff is only a month away. It will take place on November 5th at the historic Herd residence at Tamaris Country Club. And this is a historic, historically designated building that you can see on the screen here. Uh, this will be at 5 p.m. It's a fundraiser reception and we welcome the attendance of any and all council members. We will be sending invitations to you shortly via email as well as in, in, uh, in the mail. And we would be delighted to welcome you, any of you that would care to attend. You'll get to meet our members and find out more about the organization. Tickets are available uh, from today. 
As Preservation Mirage celebrates its fifth anniversary, we also look forward to helping the city of Rancho Mirage celebrate its own 50th anniversary. And we are committed to working with the city and its marketing team, especially to Gabe, <laughs> to give the city's architectural history the attention it so rightly deserves. Finally, I would like to thank all the board of Preservation Mirage nearly all of whom are seated behind me, without whom none of this would be possible. The city's vision takes the community and the staff to be part of that. Thank you. Melissa, I remember going back many years, you and I had lunch, and you said to me, Charlie, do you know that the city of Rancho Mirage has more historical homes and business locations in the city of Rancho Mirage and Palm Springs? And I said to you, no. <laughs> <laughs> why don't, why, and what do you want? She said, I want to do something about this. And boy, did you ever do something. <laughs> you took, uh, took the start. Uh, you worked with uh, the, our city staff with this. Uh, you have developed a great relationship with the city, the staff, your group, because I remember when you had just a few people there. Exactly, really. yes. Look what you have brought that I know, to. We've, we've created a monster. Amazing, <laughs> it's a great monster. And you're being remiss in not mentioning the fabulous book that you did on Rancho Mirage. Why don't you just give a little bit of what it contains? That's ancient history. <laughs> I know it is, but it's a good history. Um, so, yes, for, for people who don't know, I'm also the author of a book called Mod Mirage that was published in 2018 um, by Gibbs Smith. And that book um, was the first ever book about historical houses in Rancho Mirage. And it really, um, for me, it was a fascinating research project as well as uh, obviously the work of writing it and putting it together. But um, during the process of researching the book, I uncovered a lot of homes that we didn't really know about before. And I also really established the history of Rancho Mirage um, from its country club days um, and before, but really how the city developed from the success of Thunderbird Country Club and Tamaris Country Club. And uh, I'm sure that's something that will be acknowledged in the 50th anniversary of the city as well. Very good, and it's, it's never uh, too late to uh, revise that again. And I know you've done a couple of wonderful uh, programs at our library in the community room, which were sold out. Yes. So I would think maybe somewhere in the, in the 50 uh, uh, group that we're putting together that hopefully you would think to do something again on those lines. It would be my pleasure. Very good. I'll put that in the pipeline. All right. Thank, Thank you, you, dear. <laughs> Anybody else have any questions? All right. Again, congratulations. Thank you. you and I starting when you took it. I appreciate it. <laughs> Thank you, Mr. Thank Mayor. You. All right, moving on, our next presentation is a video presentation by Kai Beach, video production coordinator. And the topics that he's going to talk about include Betty Ford Center, summer internship for medical students, program and city of Rancho Mirage boards and commissions. And that's just the touch of it. How many have you done so far, young man? Oh, we've averaged about three weeks so far. <laughs> Hi, Kai. All right. Thanks, Mr. Mayor, City Council, City Leaders. So I am Kai Beach. I'm the video production coordinator for the beautiful city of Ranch Mirage. I graciously accepted this position late January for many reasons. My family has a strong tie to the desert. Ranch Mirage is a beautiful community with beautiful stories to tell. But most importantly, it's because I believe in the leadership and the direction of our marketing director, Gabe Gotti. So thanks, Gabe, for bringing me on. Do appreciate it. Now, since I started, we worked with uh, various organizations throughout the city, Cal Fire, Ranch Mirage, Public Works, Public Safety, Betty Ford Center, uh, Eisenhower Health, and the boys in back, the Riverside County Sheriff's Department. So today, we're going to show two videos. First one is going to be the Betty Ford Center, what you touched on, their summer program with medical students. Following that, we have the overview of uh, the board and commissions here as uh, requested by Councilmember Downs. So enjoy. 
grateful to the city of Rancho Mirage for the opportunity to talk about something that we're so passionate about. The Betty Ford Center in Rancho Mirage has a strong history of helping and healing. Betty Ford <coughs> defeated the disease in her own life. And then Betty, being Betty, set out to help others. Now it's also being recognized for the decades of educating medical students on addiction and recovery. They come here much of the time expecting a professional experience. We always say they're gonna leave here being changed personally. This is a pre-survey and post-survey graph showing the impact and change we're making. Joseph Skorzewski is the Executive Director of Medical and Professional Education at the Betty Ford Center. He says the Center's Summer Institute for Medical Students, or SIMS program, held in Rancho Mirage. Each of these pictures has 15 students from 15 different medical schools. Is impacting healthcare worldwide. For the last 34 years, we've now increased whereby we bring 250 students from 120 different medical schools all over the world to our campus to go through treatment like actual patients. With medical professionals like Dr. Karen Antweiler, who was so inspired by her experiences while attending the Sims program during medical school. Betty Ford is training the next generation, hence me. That she returned to work at the Hazelden Betty Ford Center after graduation. Coming to this program, I felt so empowered afterwards that I felt that as a family medicine resident, I can treat the patient holistically, provide the entire care. Now, according to addiction experts, there's a growing need for this very specialized medical training. More people than ever are dying from substance use disorders. We need to make sure that the frontline workers, that the people that see this time and time again, are prepared to adequately treat it and adequately intervene. And the Betty Ford Center and Rancho Mirage will continue battling this worldwide epidemic by educating the future of healthcare workers on helping and healing. of Rancho Mirage currently has 12 boards and commissions. Utilizing the dedication and expertise of more than 65 volunteer citizens. The boards and commissions are established as advisory bodies to the Rancho Mirage City Council. The primary role of these advisory boards and commissions are to increase public input and participation in the determination of city policies and operating procedures. Architectural Review Board advises the Planning Commission on matters <coughs> pertaining to the design of projects. The Cultural Commission aims at enhancing access to cultural events and amenities for residents. The Emergency Preparedness Commission's goal is effective planning and preparation for natural and other disasters. The Parks and Trails Commission works on the development and maintenance of the city's recreational parks <coughs> and trail system. The Historic Preservation Commission recommends the recognition and preservation of the city's many historical resources. The Housing Commission advises the city's public housing programs. The Library and Observatory Advisory Commission works to maximize educational and cultural benefits for residents and guests. The Library Observatory Foundation Board is the fundraising tax-exempt 501c3 that provides additional funds for program enrichment. The Mobile Home Fair Practices Commission reviews park-related matters and advises on the city's mobile home rent control ordinance. The Planning Commission conducts public hearings to determine matters of land use and development and makes recommendations to City Council. The Speaker Series Commission advises on matters pertaining to the annual Rancho Mirage Speaker Series. And the Traffic Safety Commission advocates on matters concerning traffic safety conditions. Any Rancho Mirage resident interested in serving on one of these boards or commissions is invited to complete an application and submit it to the city clerk. The process is simple. Go online to RanchoMiragesCA.gov, click on Our City, scroll down, and then click on the Applications tab. Fill out the requested information and either email it to Christy R at RanchoMiragesCA.gov or drop it off in person at City Hall. All board and commission terms are for a one-year period starting June 1st of each year. If an unscheduled vacancy happens, a notice is posted, and new applications are sent to City Council for consideration for appointment. For more information, visit the City's website at RanchoMirageCA.gov or call 
324-4511. Well, let me say, Cecil B. DeMille Jr., you're doing such a great job. Thank we you. are so proud of you and to uh, highlight everything that's going on in Ranch Mirage. Uh, you make it look so fabulous, and we are so proud to have you with us, and I'm sure there's much more to come from you. Absolutely. And with that, Steve. Thank you, Mr. Mayor, and thank you, Gabe, uh, Gabe of course, and Kai for all the work that you do. Um, I was uh, particularly pleased to see the not, not only the Betty Ford uh, video, that's, they do great work for us, but thank you for showing the um, Ranch Mirage Boards and Commissions video. So. Uh, as you had suggested, I thought it was a good idea to highlight all of the wonderful people that uh, provide service to this city on our various commissions and boards, and also as a way to encourage others to serve on our boards as well. So thank you for doing that, and thank you for showing those videos to us today, uh, Kai. Much appreciated. Thank you. Thanks for having thank me. Thank you. Anybody else have anything to say to Mr. DeMille? <laughs> no, I've already thanked him a dozen times. <laughs> awesome. I think it's terrific. <clears throat> Everything you're doing is, is just... Um, Top notch, and we're just so proud to show all your work. Thank you again. Thank you, and super proud to be part of the team. And if anyone in the city of Rancho Mirage has a beautiful story to tell, reach out to the marketing team, and we'll make it happen. Very good. Thank, Thank you. you. Mr. Mayor, if I will, uh, yes, sir. you know, for Kai, he joined us in January. And uh, as you can see, just by his personality in the interview, he aced the interview, the whole panel. He was an unanimous, unanimous decision. But uh, an interesting story. His first week on the job, I said, sign your onboarding paperwork, fix out your email, get your city-issued phone. And then that's right when the Children's Discovery Museum was launching their campaign. Yeah. So I went to him like on day two and I said, hey, I know you're getting settled, but we do have this project. And he was like in his car with a camera and had like edited drone footage and did a world-class video within like his first week of being on the job. And he hasn't slowed down since. He's not one guy that I've ever had to say, hey, why don't you get out in the community and film something? He literally emails me every week and says, hey, I'm at Coffee with a K, I'm at the gun leather store. So he knows more people in the community probably than anybody on the dais uh, from just from being out in the community. So he's, uh, he's a pleasure to work with and he's done a lot of good for the, for the city of Rancho Mirage. So Kai, thank you. Uh, Gabe, I thought you were gonna say when you talk to him, uh, that you were thinking, are you going to work for Ranch Mirage or take the seven-year contract at Paramount Studios? <laughs> you just stop giving him ideas. We want to there keep you, him. There yeah. you go. Thank you, buddy. Thank you. Thank you, Kai. All right. Getting on with it. The next is the non-agenda public comments. And this is an opportunity for the public to speak on issues that are not on the agenda for a maximum of three minutes per speaker. And I'm gonna turn this over to our city clerk. Thank you, Mayor. So like the mayor said, this is a time for um, the public to speak on items that are not on the agenda. So if you are participating remotely, you will press star nine on your phone or raise hand on Zoom to let us know that you'd like to speak. And we'll start with the speaker cards that were submitted. Tom Wheel. Mr. Mayor, members of the council, thank you for the opportunity. I, as being a, a newbie to the aeronautic industry, first time I attended a meeting, I asked for the long-term planning commission, a plan for the future. I'd never really got an answer until this past week when we had our first meeting developing a strategic plan. Long story short, the airport is landlocked and it has spawned parking problems, baggage handling problems, car rental problems that just are not gonna go away. Uh, I'll be happy to get into all the details if you're anybody is interested, I won't bore you with, <laughs> this meeting started at noon and ended at 8 p.m. Mm -hmm. I, I marvel at myself that I was able to keep my concentration that long. So if there are any questions, I'll be happy to give you whatever answer I can. Um, I can just tell you that the operations continue to set records every month, and it, I liken it to putting three pounds in a two-pound jar. Mm -hmm. 
it, at some point this is going to break. It can't go on like this. Yeah, I, I, I do know that uh, what you're saying is so true that that airport and uh, a certain look, a certain group of, of flights that were going to come in there, and it has grown. I think everybody was just caught off guard with how big this has come, if that's not a true statement. Well, it's a magnificent building, and it's, it's part of the history of Palm Springs. The reality is, looking forward 20, 25 years, that operation is not going to be able to handle the traffic that is, I mean, yeah. just to prove the, uh, the Disney uh, uh, operation, 1,700 homes, yes. big hotel. Yes. There are others down Portola. Mm -hmm. uh, there are expansions going on all over, and it, it becomes exponential as you start looking at it towards the services that uh, people here should expect. Um, it is a serious problem, and I don't have an easy answer other than I think thought should be given to buying acreage well east of this area, uh, because at some point I think they're going to have to keep that building, probably use it for a different purpose, uh, but the airport itself is just growing too fast, and it's not going to be able to stop it. Right. Well, I know it's in good hands, and you guys are always thinking out of the box and looking forward to the growth of that whole industry over there. Mr. It's Mr. difficult Hall. with 18 people on a commission to get your thoughts up. <laughs> there you go. Okay. Yes, Ibis. Um, you talk about expansion, and I, I know you don't, you can't go through the entire um, packet that you have, but could you give us some idea as to where their expansion may take them and how soon this will be needed? And are they already, uh, they're overwhelmed without a doubt? But what is the next step that they're going to be able to take that will make sense? I know that, you know, more and more people are coming here with everything that you mentioned and now with the arena that's coming in. Where do they go from here and in the immediate future? Well, First of all, parking has been the, the central part of all this. Because without being able to move the rental uh, companies out of the airport, um, we are stricken with now trying to get surface pro uh, pro uh, parking. Um, but a quick answer to your question. On LCLO, there's some acreage that they are going to use for employee parking. Okay. That will free up. That will free up the uh, uh, employee parking lot for now we're going to consider having premium parking and ordinary parking. Ordinary parking is going to be taken up with where the cell lot is now and going would be east. That land is still owned by the airport. It's controlled by the FAA. So there are all sorts of restrictions as to what you can build. The suggestion has been to put in a two or three story parking garage that will also house the, uh, the, the car rental business, which will then in turn enable us to have more baggage handling, better uh, uh, baggage pickup. Um, we are talking about a renovation of the entire driveway around the airport, uh, having one for departing passengers, one for arriving passengers, and then once the, air, the car rental is out of the airport, that's where the taxi cabs are going to go. It just keeps, it's like an unending plate of spaghetti. It's one thing depends on another and another and another. There's no start and there's, uh, there's no end to it. It's, it's, it's just going to be a serious growth problem. Yes, absolutely. Ted. I hope that answered your question. You know, yes. Tom, yes. I, I think it might be wise to <clears throat> explain the fact that the structure of the, the airport, the fact that the airport is owned by the city of Palm Springs. Correct. Um, they, they own the property uh, and that each of the cities essentially uh, sends a representative to the airport planning commission, such as yourself. So we are advisory an advisory board to the ownership of the airport. So obviously you're representing our city, 
but you're merely one of nine cities and whomever. Uh, so that uh, it is frustrating, obviously, for someone like yourself, because uh, you have to be bound by whatever the ownership there decides to do. And of course, from a regulatory standpoint, when you're dealing with the FAA, you have federal restrictions and you're quite limited. So um, we appreciate your work. I can hear the frustration in your voice. Uh, I can see it on you, and uh, I just wanted to clarify so that anyone that's watching you and or this program understands the ownership structure of the airport. There are 18 commissioners, nine of whom are from Palm Springs, so it's very hard for any other voice to be heard, and that's just the way it is. That's the prerogative of ownership. Well, thank you. Thank you for Thank you around. again. Appreciate it. Thank you for sharing your frustration. Chrissy? Sorry about that. Uh, Eric Hi. Cunningham? I see the timer here. Uh, hello, Hi, uh, City Council. Um, I just wanted to take some time to um, heap praise on uh, the Ranch Mirage Library and Observatory. Uh, as some of you know, I'm a newer resident to Ranch Mirage, uh, so you all are very familiar with how great the library is. You don't need to hear it from me, so I won't take too much time. But as a newer resident, um, I wanted to talk about how amazing and kind of floored I've been uh, at how great the library is, how great the people there uh, are. And I wanted to kind of highlight the, um, especially the um, new media and um, internet presence that they have. I subscribe to all their emails and all that stuff. And that has been such an effective way for me to get informed uh, about the city in a way where, as somebody who doesn't know that many people here, uh, it has been really useful. I've been watching the um, programming that they put online um, that happened before I moved here. Um, I've been watching the Curiosity Trap. There's a, a whole show that they put on. Um, so I just wanted to kind of heap praise and take a little bit of time to say that they're doing a phenomenal job. And um, I just wanted to take some time to say that. That's all. Yeah, it's very nice of you to come Thank up you. and do that. <laughs> Thank, Thank you. you. We're proud of it, too. Brad Anderson. Hello, hi, my name is Brad Anderson. I live in the city of Ranch Mirage. I want to take just a moment of your time to talk about cold compliance. Uh, the first time I ever spoke at this council was because of a citation that was issued to me unfairly. And I'm here again because the same things happen again. Um, I have a neighbor that's a special interest, meaning they have influences with city council members. And that's been going on since I'm 20 some years or actually 15 years, excuse me. So uh, I kind of say it's like living next to Oprah's janitor. I can't do anything about it. They can do whatever they want. I could never run or operate a business like these people do. But they use cold compliance. They use the city as a weapon against me. And, and it's going on again. Uh, the situation now is apparently my Ocotillos appears dead. It do, it's not dead, it's a living plant, an Ocotillo. If you lived in the desert, you know what they look like uh, during the drought, no less. So that's the issue. I have to prove that my Ocotillo plant is alive. And, and now I have to go through this process of doing this. And, it's, and if you could take care of that, I would appreciate it, but I don't think you will because the city manager refuses to return my phone cards, and so does the cold compliance manager. I haven't heard anything from them. Uh, so. That's really all I have to say. I've talked, I've talked, I've, I've spoke before about code compliance and my neighbor, an elderly lady, possibly dementia. But again, she's racking up violations she probably doesn't even know about. And, and the city needs to mitigate the use of this weaponizing of uh, city codes for certain residents, certain people, because I've gone through with the city attorney before on the last one, where I had to go through the administrative citation process or the hearing process, and then I would have went to Superior Court, was during the pandemic. I don't, I don't know how to sue people, so that had to go on the, but I'll go this time. I will, uh, I will hesitate to uh, go to the next step if, if, if forced to. And uh, 
that's all I have. Thank you. Thanks for your comment. Susan Ragsdale. Thank you very much. I really appreciate the opportunity to speak to you in public like this. Um, <clears throat> I'm having a very hard time. I always pay my rent on time. During the Labor Day weekend, I put my rent check into the mail slot at the office for Whispering Waters. On the following Tuesday, Hyder Property manage, Manager Sonia Cabrera attached it to my screen door with a sticky note that reads, no longer can't accept rent. Last Friday, I was served a court summons for eviction, which reads, you are being sued by the plaintiff, the housing authority for the city of Rancho Mirage. Since March 2019, after being harassed by Hyder Property Management and the teams of bullies who have lived on either side of me, I'm beyond my ability to cope with this legal case. So I used my rent money to hire a law firm called Cal Tenet Law. So far, I've spent $600 in legal fees, and I've been advised to take the next step, which is a demur, costing another $400 to be paid tomorrow. I can't afford these legal fees. I run out of money at the end of every month. You know, $1,483 doesn't go very far, even when you have affordable housing. And more significantly, I don't deserve this disgraceful eviction because it's based on three pages of horrific, blatant lies that Mrs. Cabrera has written. Once my attorney read these lies, he said about the writer, these people are so mean. No kidding. Then he added, at least the Rancho Mirage Housing Authority has some accountability. Allow me to read one of these horrific lies. On October 28, 2020, management received written complaints from multiple residents that you had started yelling obscenities at and otherwise harassing three residents in the community. These residents later reported to management that the severity and intensity of this harassment was disturbing to their quiet enjoyment of the premises and caused one resident to start crying. The fact is, these people were the ones who were yelling at me. I wonder, how can the city housing manager ever trust this dishonest, self-serving Hyder property management staff again? Since May, when Sonia Cabrera's termination of Tennessee eviction began, everyone I know has suggested I go to the local news station to report this abusive action. This is not me at all. Just like suing somebody is not me. I, I'm not comfortable with it. I do not want to do this. However, I am feeling desperate, and this is why I'm here. I remember the year 2018. Marcus wanted to sack Hyder Property Management. No wonder. Oh, my gosh. Now that I've experienced three and a half years of hell dealing with the Hyder Management staff, I want to report how terribly awful Hyder Property manage Management is. It's evil. Evil. Really. Hyder is never wrong. Hyder does not accept criticism and tells you to leave if you don't like it. They also tell you you're crazy and they write about it. There is no humanity. Hyder lets their property management staff get away with murder. Sonia broke, the, broke a property management cardinal rule when she did not check the landlord verification for new tenants who moved in next door to me and they turned out to be criminally abusive, as you have seen in my video stills. I had bullies on this side and bullies on that side. You've seen pictures. Hyder is indecently br brutal. They make it all happen for themselves with lies. Hyder Property Management is now wop wop mopping the floor with me. They are officially at war due to my legal papers. They don't see the big picture at all. I'm begging for help from you, because you're the boss, you're in charge, and I'm begging for help. Please save my life. On September 20th, I went to City Hall in order to release from liability the city and the Rancho Mirage Housing Authority from all the abuses that I've endured all these years. I wrote a promise not to sue, and I'm willing to sign an agreement with Hyder Property Management. I just want them to leave me alone and let me live in peace, stop evicting me, stop hurting me, and stop murdering me. They are literally killing me. I'm sorry, I hate to complain, but I've, you know, remember this guy? This is what I'm talking about. 
these people's lies. Oh, can you please wrap I'm up? Oh, so sorry. Please Thank forgive you. me. I really hate to complain. I'd rather be doing something nice. Thank you. Wally Melendez. <clears throat> uh, hi, I'm uh, Wally Melendez. Uh, good afternoon, City Council, City of uh, Rancho Mirage. When, when, when are we going to put up a hydrogen fuel station? Why, why are we enamored of gasoline burning uh, cars? It is a shame that we, or let me be more specific, the city of Rancho Mirage, which is, in my view, a famous town, even if it's small, it's famous. It's got a catchy name, Rancho Mirage. <clears throat> we, Rancho Mirage, have the resources. We have multi-billion dollars strewn around the city. A hydrogen fuel station is about $1 million, which to a city like Rancho Mirage is pocket money. Think of it this way. We can start the ball rolling. We can put up a hydrogen fuel station that will help the climate will cut down on gasoline burning emissions. Three companies that I know of are making hydrogen fuel cars. And in case you don't know, the hydrogen fuel charges up your battery. Your battery is only one, one motor, alternating cur current motor. No spark plugs, no mufflers, no tune-ups. Toyota, Honda, and Shandai are making hydrogen fuel cell cars. I can get you, if you help me put up a hydrogen fuel station, I can bring a Mirai, which is made by Toyota. If you promise me you're gonna put up a station, the city council and the city, I can bring them right here tomorrow and show you how it works. Thank you very much. Thank you, Wally. Chrissy? Okay, before I call this last speaker card, um, just a reminder to those participating via Zoom, if you want to speak, please press star nine on your phone or raise hand on Zoom. Meryl Nagolian. And for those of you who have ran for multiple offices and running for new ones, I'm very grateful for your time, dedication to the city. Okay. Um, thank you again for your time and your dedication to the city. I am a resident of Rancho Mirage. I work in Rancho Mirage, and I love the city. We were going to initially move to Palm Springs, but once we saw Rancho Mirage, we were all in. We live here since 19, 2018, excuse me. And when we moved to our home, being forward thinkers and very green thinkers, first thing we did was put in solar. Second thing we did, knowing the water problems in California, was to start our conversion to landscaping our property into succulents, desert plants, and then turf. We did that in two phases. One was completed 
in 20 for 8,000 square feet of garden, and one was completed one month before you granted the allowance this last year in July for about 5,000 square feet. We worked with Coachella Valley Water District, who are wonderful to work with. We enjoyed the process of going through that, improving our property, and thinking long term, not just for the people within our community, but within city and the state, who has a lot of water problems right now. And we're trying to do our best. And I had called a few months prior to filling out all the forms for completion to Coachella Water District and also to the city of Rancho Mirage, asking them if there was an additional allowance just to help me calculate how much of it I want to put in turf. And I was told there wasn't. So I went ahead, nevertheless, took out a loan and went ahead and did that. Then I find out from a neighbor that there's a $3 allowance the city has provided and has since gone through and increased that budget number because of the applicants. I have been a consultant to municipalities for 20 years of my life. My husband is a federal employee that's retired. We care about things like this. I have a very comprehensive understanding of budget and cities and how you guys all work. I am appealing to the one month extension that I need to qualify for that because I was too early. I feel like I'm being penalized over and over again for being too early. I was told that I was too early in completing my turf, but I could apply for my solar. When I looked up the solar, I was a month too early for my solar completion and certification. So I've completed a letter and I've submitted my Coachella Valley Water District ap approvals and the square footages that they've allowed that I have since completed, and I've given those documentation to Christy for your attention. I seriously appreciate you taking a few minutes to consider my appeal. Thank you very much for your time. Thank you. There are no speakers on Zoom, so that was the last speaker. Very good, thank you very much for all of you taking the time to speak. Next, we're going to move on to council board member reports or comments. And I'm gonna start with Mr. Ted. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Uh, last week, the Rancher Mirage Chamber had a luncheon featuring this magnificent resort Sensai Porcupine Creek. You might want to put up a slide and it's about to show you an overview. On November 1, this 230-acre retreat will open with only, only 22 richly appointed accommodations. It is not a very large resort, but it is extremely exclusive. Amenities include yoga and fitness pavilions, a lagoon-style swimming pool, state-of-the-art diagnostic center, premium spa facilities, and exclusive for guests only, an incredible 18-hole championship golf course. And I can tell you from personal experience, it is a magnificent course. In addition, as if this was not enough, there are both hard and clay tennis courts and the Sensai by Nobu restaurant featuring ever-changing menu of wholesome cuisine. And this is the part that I find quite fascinating. Before guests arrive, they have an option, and again, it's an option, of receiving by mail a tech-enabled wearable device to begin modern, modern monitoring their healthy data. Nutritionists, exercise, exercise psychologists, and mindfulness guides, all with advanced degrees, analyze the data to help guests meet their goals when they arrive. The Sensei philosophy supported by technology 
is to guide guests on a wellness experience unlike any other in the world. And I can tell you that this is opening in just a very short time, November. I know of certain people that have already booked the, uh, the spa for Thanksgiving. It will become an international, world-renowned place. We are just thrilled to have it available. I'd also like to mention a, a letter that I received this week. And it says, Honorable Councilman Ted Weil. Dear Councilman Weil, since my husband and I moved to Rancho Mirage 21 years ago, I never thought I would be a recipient of the city's free ambulance service for its residents. However, on September 4 at 2 a.m., I had an allergic reaction to a new medication, and after I passed out, my husband called 911. In just a few minutes, the paramedics arrived, gave me a shot of Benadryl, and transported me to Eisenhower Medical. I was impressed by how professional, efficient, and knowledgeable the paramedics were. They explained to me what was happening and were very reassuring. I really appreciate the city of Rancho Mirage provides this, provides this very important service to the residents of Rancho Mirage. As you probably are aware, we do have free ambulance service from anywhere in Rancho Mirage. And by the way, that includes if you ended up having a, a guest at your home who had to be taken by ambulance um, and they were not a resident of Rancho Mirage, they would still benefit by this free service. So I want to congratulate Cal Fire. I thank you, sir. Uh, I sent a letter to the captain and a copy of this. And we get these kinds of accolades on your behalf on a regular basis. So we thank you so very much. And in concluding, I would like to mention, by the way, that uh, on October 19th at the Rancho Mirage Library, uh, there is a candidates forum. We have an election coming up where there are three seats that are going to be available. Uh, on the city council here in Rancho Mirage. Uh, and you will have the opportunity to hear from all of the prospective candidates on October 19th, starting at 5.30 p.m. Thank you very much, Mr. Mayor. You're welcome. Iris? Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Um, th this is very special for me because today I would like to take a few minutes to tell you about the need to find forever homes for animals at our local shelters. And please note that the forever is spelled F-U-R. Our local shelters have started their Fall in Love campaign. Uh, and with this new campaign, adoption fees have been waived, making it much easier than ever to adopt a pet. Um, the library on October 29th will be having also an Adopt-A-Pet event. But the Coachella Valley Animal Campus in Thousand Palms is the nearest county location to find your forever friend. They have an open adoption process and encourage all folks interested in adopting to come to the shelter and fall in love with the newest member of your family and somebody who will be always happy to see you when you walk in that door. And the city is also partnering with Animal Samaritans and hosting a puppy adoption event at the Rancho Mirage Library that I just mentioned. It will be taking place on October 29th from 2 o'clock to 4 o'clock p.m. There is an application to be filled out online, and it's at animalssamaritans.org, and you should fill it out prior to coming for an adoption. Uh, you need to fill it out ahead of time so that when you come to pick out a, a pet, you can take that pet home with you, hopefully. 
I encourage you to fill it out ahead of time because we don't want anyone to be disappointed showing up to adopt a pet at our library and finding out that they have to be vetted before they can take a pet home with them. So don't forget the city's animal adoption and pet care incentive program also allows Rancho Mirage residents to be reimbursed for adoption costs up to $100 and pet care services up to $200. The adoption costs now are being waived at this point, but we will be certainly uh, reimbursing your whatever costs you have incurred for the uh, spaying or neutering or vaccinations that might be needed. So if I could have the video shown at this time, and this is the also of their life. <coughs> We're really kind of ground zero for animal care in the county. <coughs> People place, always place a lot of emphasis on coming to adopt a dog, but cats are one of our biggest issues as well. Hi, my name is Dr. Kim Youngberg. I'm the Deputy Director for Riverside County Department of Animal Services. Lately, we've been experiencing animals coming in in the numbers of over 100 per day. It's happening because people don't have their pets microchipped so that we can return them back to them when they're lost. Also, have your pets spayed or neutered. What we really need is for people to come out and adopt animals. The consequences of animals not getting adopted, they can become sick, their behavior can deteriorate. And they can get they get stressed out, and then sometimes, unfortunately, the end point is euthanasia. Thank you so much. It's a lot of work. Our staff are doing everything that they can to work diligently to try and save animals' lives. So the city of Rancho Mirage offers a program to help promote adoption of pets from the shelter. It's amazing that they're a city that does that for their constituents where they will help to reimburse them for the fees for adoptions. And we wish more cities would jump on board and do the same thing. Thank you so much, Jason. And a special thanks also to Kai who also made that video, another one of his famous videos. Uh, for information in regard to adoption, call City Hall. It's very easy. It's 760-324-4511, 324-4511, or visit our website at ranchomiragega.gov. And just as a special note, unfortunately, our local shelters and rescue organizations are currently full of pets that need homes. So if you are able, please consider adopting a pet. It will certainly change your life. It will change their lives as well. And unfortunately, because so many pets were adopted during the pandemic, uh, a lot of people after adopting a pet realized that they either didn't have the appropriate home for the pet or they were going back to a job that they, where they needed to be at work and didn't have uh, the opportunity to have someone watch over their pet while they were at work. So for those of you who are considering adopting a pet, just keep in mind a couple of things. Number one, before you adopt a pet, make sure your home can accommodate that pet. If you live in a small apartment, you may want to not think about having a, adopt a 200 pound dog you know, think of the accommodations that will fit the animal you adopt. Also, if you find you fall in love with a dog, but he's a barking dog, that might be something you would have to consider. You know, if you live in a place that can accommodate and you have outdoors areas where you won't be affecting neighbors around you, um, that's something to consider as far as a barking pet. Uh, also, do you have time 
for taking your dog for walks or exercising? Um, and can you afford to keep a pet? Can you afford to feed the pet? Can you afford any medical uh, costs that may be incurred? Because they can get very expensive. So we want everyone out there to please adopt a new beloved family member, but do it sensibly, do it with the utmost care, because you want to bring someone into your home that you're going to fall in love with, but you don't want to find later on that it's not the right pet for you. So thank you again. I wish you all the very best and happy adoption. Uh, we look forward to um, all the pets coming and finding a new favorite home. Thank you. And thank you, Charlie. Thank you, Iris. Mr. Steve. <laughs> Thank you, Mr. Mayor. So uh, one of my council responsibilities is that I am the uh, Rancho Mirage representative on the executive committee of Visit Greater Palm Springs. Visit Greater Palm Springs is the uh, Coachella Valley Convention and Visitors Bureau, and the role of the uh, Visit, Visit Greater Palm Springs is to encourage tourism uh, and bring visitors and tourists to our desert. Particularly important for us here in Rancho Mirage because uh, almost 30% of our city's revenues come from tranche and occupancy taxes collected from our hotels. So it's a very important role for us. So uh, last Friday was the uh, meeting of the executive committee and the board of directors for Visit Greater Palm Springs. Uh, and um, the staff presented to us uh, some video, videos that they are getting ready to show to encourage tourism during the upcoming season. And I thought you'd be interested to see a couple of those videos. So I've got a couple of them I'm going to share with you today. Uh, these are um, clips that will be shown on uh, uh, television commercials as well as uh, social media and um, um, uh, internet search engine uh, websites uh, over the next uh, several months. And I, these uh, videos will give you some idea uh, as to what we already know, that we live in a great place, and it might encourage you to do a staycation right here in Rancho Mirage. Josh, would you go ahead with the videos? Yes. Here we go. All the way up. Whoa! You're never alone when you follow dreams. Enjoying the beautiful day out in the oasis. Breathe it all out now, your hair in the breeze. Mm -mm -mm. You can run, 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 you can fly away, you can be. A we wonder, a we roam. What am I getting myself into? We take. Whoa! Just the perfect getaway. Let's go. Visit Greater Palm Springs. Find your oasis. Thank you, Josh. Uh, so uh, I just thought you might be interested in seeing what uh, Visit Greater Palm Springs is doing to encourage economic activity and to encourage visitors and tourism in our deserts. Uh, thank you, Mr. Mayor. You know, Steve, what you said is so true, right under our noses, and we don't take advantage, a lot of us, and go to any of the things that are in this whole Coachella Valley. It's a, it's a good thought. Thank you, Steve. All right, last but not least, it's me. And I will say, with the return of fall, we bring in cool evenings and return of a fall lineup of events at the beautiful Rancho Mirage Amphitheater. Please play the city's promotional 
video. Boy, we're getting videos today, kids. <laughs> the curtain is rising on desert theatrical season at the Rancho Mirage Amphitheater with their cabaret and Broadway series. In October, enjoy an intimate evening of songs from Broadway veterans Valerie Perry of Evita and David Burnham of Wicked. February opens with Rodgers and Hammerstein's South Pacific, Disney's Beauty and the Beast, and Andrew Lloyd Webber's Joseph and the Amazing Technicolor Dreamcoat. For details and tickets, visit desert-theatricals.com for the best in local professional theater under the stars. That's desert-theatricals.com. Very good, thank you. You know, it's a, it's a big lineup, so I, I'll just give some few highlights. Uh, Desert Theatricals brings cabaret to the amphitheater this month with two amazing performances. On October 27, Broadway's Valerie Perry will entertain you with classics from the Great White Way and amusing stories about her career and what she went through. Then on October 29th, David Burham, mostly Broadway, is pure entertainment filled with an evening of interesting stories Fantastic music and lots of fun. There will be food and beverage available at your options from Lulu Catering. For more information for this, you can go to deserttheatricals.com or you can call the library or you can call a city hall. Tickets are also on sale now for the upcoming 2023 Broadway musical series. The season opens February the 17th for the 19th with the promise of an enchanted evening through Rogers and Hammerstein's romantic story, South Pacific. March 17th to the 19th features Disney's Beauty and the Beast, the beloved fairy tale about the power of love and importance of valuing character. Third and final Broadway musical of the season will be Joseph and the Amazing Technicolor Dreamcoat. Featuring the music of Andrew Lord Weber, taking place April 14th to the 16th. <clears throat> and I just wanted to say to this series, uh, Desert Theatricals was such a response from the last one, they added another day. So it shows the excitement and the attendance that this brings to Rancho Mirage, Amphitheater, along also with the Coachella Valley. Tickets can be purchased at deserttheatricals.com, as I said, and Rancho Mirage residents can purchase discounted general admission tickets at the Rancho Mirage Library and Observatory. Again, another new Aladdin Jr. is coming to the amphitheater November the 19th and the 20th. Desert Theatricals Youth Theater, and this is a wonderful program sponsored by Rancho Mirage Library, their foundation, and is completely free, again, completely free to all participants and patrons. I did get a, a few letters from people that were saying to me, uh, how come we don't have any free uh, entertainment at the amphitheater? There is many, many things that are free that are given to different organizations and foundations that are free to our audience and the Coachella Valley. So the power of love and importance of value character. Third and final Broadway musical of the season will be, oh, did I do that already? Pardon me, thank you, turn the page. I got carried away with my, my ad lib. While these performances are free to the public, registration is required at deserttheatricals.com. Lastly, Coachella Valley Symphony returns to the amphitheater just in time to celebrate its 30th anniversary. And this is sponsored in part by the city, CV Symphony's 2022-23 concert series will be free again as I was at living of charge. Registration, however, is required for those events. Their first concert begins with a Halloween music, and it is spectacular on Sunday, October 30th at 2 p.m. Don't miss this opportunity to see the world-class sympathy, and I hope to see you all out there enjoying these wonderful entertainment productions at the Rancho Mirage Hollywood Bowl, as I call it. <laughs> 
Uh, and Mr. And Mayor, the end. Yes, just yes. a special thank you to you for bringing us the uh, Desert Theatricals. You were the one who suggested them. You brought them to our door. And uh, it's been a love story ever since. So I want to thank you so much. Thank you, Iris. You can see I'm a little passionate with everything they're bringing. And they're also thinking out of the box and, and improving and everything with uh, the staff, with Gabe and Isaiah and everybody that participates in backing them and giving them the opportunity to grow and grow and grow. And as I think I said at our last council meeting, that there are some fabulous things coming to that amphitheater in uh, great improvement. So can't say it, but it's a little tease that I'm giving, right? Right. right. It'll be so a surprise. Be huh? It'll be a surprise. Oh, big, big, big surprise. So looking forward to seeing that continue, Iris, to grow and everybody. So thank you, everybody, for that. With that, we're going to take, if we may, a 10 or 15 minute break. We've had a lot going on so far, so we just need a little, uh, little downtime. So we are, are going to adjourn for a few minutes. So stay tuned. We are back in session and it is, what, what time is it? 2.27. And uh, we got through the um, council member comments. And we're going to go right now to city manager comments. And uh, Gabe. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Gabe Cotting, Director of Marketing, standing in for Isaiah Hagerman. So one point of clarification, the band being here today was no reflection of our city manager not being here. So I wanted to make, well, that, I <laughs> I wanted to make that clarification. <laughs> Uh, Actually, in, case somebody me, in, in case somebody was going to try to blame me for that. No, you told me they were here in, in, uh, in salute. <laughs> uh, stricken from the record. There you go. Uh, so the, uh, I have two, two points to clarify today. One, we're very excited um, about, uh, just wanted to remind residents that the Rancho Mirage uh, Certified Farmers Market ha is starting up tomorrow. That's from 8 a.m. to 2 p.m. That has moved to the Rancho Mirage Community Park, right on the amphitheater side. And so uh, we have about 40 uh, farmers, artisans, all kinds. Uh, so that's going to kick off tomorrow, and that's going to be every Friday. So we're excited that that kind of has a more permanent home, beautiful setting in our park. And so make sure that uh, residents and guests, I invite you to go out and support your local farmers, get to know where some of your food right down Valley. Everything that's there is sourced within 100 miles. Uh, and then they have all kinds of artisans and everything there too. So, and then secondly, um, and I, in fact, I just did this. So we've discussed we've discussed on many occasions over the last couple of years the state requirements for the updated trash, new trash and recycling of your or organic waste carts, and the times here. So uh, Vertex is going to start rolling those out in November. So the city, and, and thanks to Jessica Pulliam, uh, the city just launched on its website where you can go and you can type your address, and it'll let you know when your bins are coming. I typed in my address, it said November 1st. It also prompted me if I wanted him to send me an alert, either a phone call or an email uh, a day prior or the same day, just as a reminder. So it was pretty cool. So make sure you go on the city's website. If you go under uh, residence and city services, you'll go into where the trash and recycling and where it says Senate Bill 1383. And there's all a bunch of uh, FAQs, frequently asked questions, and that uh, I tested the map out right before uh, coming to the meeting. So uh, that's all I have for uh, stand-in stand in city manager comments. You, d you did very well. Appreciate that. And considering we're going into the consent calendar, I think you should con continue with giving us the consent calendar. Okay. Mayor and city council, you have four items on your consent calendar today. Number one is to waive the full reading of all ordinances introduced and adopted pursuant to this agenda. Number two, approve September 15th, 2022, regular meeting minutes. Number three is your contracts, and number four is demands. And uh, at this point, I'd like to uh, welcome public comments and pass it over to our city clerk, Christy. Thank you. So now's the time for if anyone has comments on the consent calendar. If you're participating via Zoom, you would press star nine on your phone or raise hand on Zoom. And I do not have any speaker cards for this, so I'll just wait a couple moments. 
and no speakers. Very good. Move to that, we will move to uh, I move to approve comment. the consent calendar. And we have a motion and I'll to approve. That. Very good. Please vote. Motion carries 4 0. Very good. Then we'll call for now the council comments. We're down to this one here. Thank you. Uh, all right. Public hearings. And we're going to turn this over to Pilar Lopez, associate planner, to present the staff report. Give me one moment as I queue up this presentation. And thank you, Mayor Townsend, and good afternoon, members of the City Council. I have for your consideration Development Agreement Amendment Case Number DA22-0001, a request from Palo Verde 37 LLC requesting a second amendment to Development Agreement Case Number DA19-0002 to extend the term of tentative track map number 36620 by an additional year and other minor changes. At this time, staff supports the current proposal for a time extension, but any future extensions would need to be analyzed and considered by staff and council. Staff may not be able to support any further extensions. The 33.74 acre project site consists of seven parcels located adjacent to Via Josefina, shown in red, between an existing equestrian center and the Versailles neighborhood. TTM 36620 and a mitigated negative declaration was approved and adopted by the City Council on December 4th, 2014 for the development of a gated residential subdivision consisting of 82 single family lots and other common area lots for related improvements. The City Council approved two extensions in 2017, extending the term of the tentative map until December 4th, 2019. The project's delays were a combination of factors, including waiting for the completion of the Coachella Valley Water District's infrastructure project in this area. Additionally, no water meters for new subdivisions were issued or installed in this area of the city while the district was completing its project. The previous owner, RM38JV LLC, submitted a development agreement application in 2019 to extend the tentative map for an additional year with certain performance standards for additional time. The initial ten tentative track map extensions extended the life of the map through the completion of CVWD's infrastructure improvements. The development agreement and associated amendments provide the applicant time to plan the development of the project and incorporate any necessary changes to address feasibility while allowing enough time to take the map through the appropriate engineering process. The purpose of the Second Amendment to Development Agreement Case Number DA190002 is to extend the term of tentative trap map number 36620 by an, one year and to include Palo Verde 37 LLC as a new project owner. Minor changes to the map are also proposed. Due to updates to the California Fire Code, City of Rancho Mirage Municipal Code, and Riverside County Fire Department standards, the applicant has reduced in size three center landscape medians, one center median, and eliminated one center median. Some pad heights have been modified in order to reduce the import and export of soil to the site. Out of the 82 total lots, pad heights have been increased for 28 lots and decreased for seven lots. The changes range from 0.1 feet to 2.5 feet in elevation change. Unique to this development is the existing single family home located at 72740 Via Florencia, which will maintain access off of Via Florencia and is not part of this development. The number of lots, overall layout, and lot sizes have not changed. The updated TTM 36620 is currently in the plan check process with the Public Works Department for a final map and rough grading permit. This item was presented to the Planning Commission on September 8, 2022. 
the Planning Commission recommends to the City Council the introduction of ordinance number next in line adopting the Second Amendment DA 22-0001 to development agreement case number DA 190002 pursuant to Chapter 17.56 of the Rancho Mirage Municipal Code. No public comments were received for this item. This concludes my presentation. I'd be happy to address any questions. Thank you. Thank you, Pilar. Now I'm gonna turn this over to the city clerk to handle any public testimony. I did not receive any speaker cards for this item. If anyone would like to speak on this item, provide public testimony, um, and you're participating via Zoom, please press star nine or raise hand on Zoom. And I'll wait a moment. And we have no speakers. Very good. Pilar, I have a question. How many times has this been extended? This will be its sixth extension. So like I mentioned previously, the first three extensions were just to allow the project to go through while CVWD was going through with its infrastructure project. Now with these development agreement and it, their subsequent am amendments, it'll justify their three other extensions. Very good. Um, so they are moving along and they have the funds and it looks like it will be built or will there be another extension or what? So they're currently in the plan check process with our public works department for their final map and rough grading. Prior to the, the other extensions, they hadn't submitted just yet. So they are on track and this owner is very eager to keep the project going. Well, so are we, so that's a good sign. Very good, any comments? Uh, yes, Mayor. <clears throat> what I'm pleased about is that uh, there is new ownership now involved in this project. And so it appears that it has been, you know, somewhat dormant for a period of time. And uh, there was great expectations going back a number of years uh, because it's in one of our prime areas. Now that new ownership is involved, I think that they have a dedication to get this completed. So I'm very pleased about, uh, about that and I look forward to, uh, uh, to approving this particular uh, issue. Very good, thank you. Any more comments? All right, I will call for a motion, please. <clears throat> All right, I'll be happy to do that. Thank uh, you. Uh, that uh, I'll make a motion that the Planning Commission recommends that the City Council introduce ordinance number next in order adopting the Second Amendment DA 22-0001 to developmental agreement case number DA 19-0002 pursuant to chapter 17.56 of the Rancho Mirage Municipal Code. Thank you, Ted. A second, please. Second. Thank you. Please vote. Motion carries 4-0. Thank you. Next on the agenda, is the historic preservation case number HP 22-003, consideration of designating the residence located at 39905 Morning Springs Road as a historic resource. And I'm turning this over to Ben Torres. Thank you, Mr. Mayor, and um, good afternoon, members of the City Council. Uh, the property owners, Kelly and Kurt, um, submitted a historic designation request for the residents located at 39905 Morning Springs Road. Uh, the property is listed in the city's 2003 Historic Resources Survey. Uh, the 0.42 acre property shown in red is located on the west side of Morning Springs Road and is 2,200 square feet in size. The property was built in 1956 and was designed by architect William Cody as a mid-century modern residence for Jimmy Hines, a well-known golf professional. Uh, Jimmy Hines owned the property between 1956 when it was built up until 1960 when he moved to Hawaii. Uh, the top image shows the rendering prepared by Cody and the bottom photograph shows the home in its current state. Uh, this page from William Cody's personal project list shows the James Hines uh, residence from 1956 located at Thunderbird North. Um, Jimmy Hines was a nationally, nationally and a locally famous golfer who was also Thunderbird's golf pro. He was also responsible for the development of the Desert Air Hotel and Golf Club, and uh, he became president and CEO of uh, that organization, which was in Rancho Mirage 
between 1967 and 1972. Uh, the historical significance of the Helms Association with Himes was also noted in the uh, Department of Parks and Recreation report prepared as part of the city's historic resources survey. Uh, the Desert Sun newspaper clippings from 1951 on the far left describe um, Jimmy Hines uh, bringing his entire staff to the Thunderbird um, Country Club from Chicago and identifies him as a member of the Ryder Cup team and two-time winner of the Los Angeles and New York City Open tournaments. The article at the center connects the popularity of uh, golf in the local area to Jimmy Hines arriving at Thunderbird. And lastly, the article to the far left from 1956 talks about Jimmy Hines um, and his new home at Thunderbird North. Hines was also featured in various publications like the Palm Springs Villager shown here. And he is identified as being the professional at uh, Thunderbird Country Club and in charge of the annual tournaments held there. Um, he was also on uh, Sports Illustrated on an article uh, from uh, 1956 uh, when he moved to his Thunderbird North home, uh, which provided golfing techniques to a national audience. Uh, this image from 1957, uh, one year after the home was built, shows the home in its original design before any additions uh, were made to the rear and front of the home. Uh, the home is located at the bottom of this photograph. And then these are some uh, photographs uh, from the front of the home showing the one bedroom addition that was made in 1961. Um, views of the carport and close ups of the front. And these are additional photographs of the entire front view along Morning Springs Road, uh, the rear and the sides of the residence. And lastly, these photographs show the new pavilion, the west rear elevation and north elevations. On August 3rd, 2022, the Historic Preservation Commission first reviewed the subject request regarding designating the home based on its connection with Jimmy Hines as both a celebrity and golfing professional. Uh, the Historic Preservation Commission unanimously voted to recommend approval based on the following criteria. Uh, the subject structure or site signifies a historical event or is associated with persons or events that have made a meaningful contribution to the city, state, or nation. And this was done due to the home's connection to Jimmy Hines. Um, therefore, at this time, um, staff recommends that the city council adopt resolution number 22 of uh, 2022 next in order, approving the designation of the residence located at 39905 Morning Springs Road as a historic resource pursuant to Ranch Mirage Municipal Code Chapter 15.27. Thank you. That concludes staff's presentation and staff and the applicant are available to answer any questions. Yes, if anyone would like to provide public testimony on this public hearing item, now's the time to do so. If you are participating via Zoom, you'd press star nine on your phone or raise hand on Zoom. I did not receive any speaker cards and there is no one wishing to speak on Zoom. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. I do have a question uh, on page six. Dash one, it mentions that this home has undergone some modifications, additions since it was built. And due to these modifications slash additions, the current request is based solely on the home's original owner who lived there between 1956, 1960. So, uh, and it was approved. But my question is, and I know we made changes to the uh, requirements that were needed to allow a home to be designated. So if this home has not been owned by a celebrity with the modifications that have taken place, would this be home be uh, allowed? as a designated home with the changes that have taken place? So if this home was uh, not associated with Jimmy Hines, uh, the Historic Preservation Commission would um, do a property tour. And as part of that property tour, um, there could potentially be some um, modifications requested uh, where potentially the uh, additions would have to be demolished and it would have to be restored back to its original uh, design. Uh, but uh, this current request is based solely off its connection to Jimmy Hines due to those modifications existing on the property. 
Okay, so um, could you tell us a little bit about what the modifications have been done and if they, if it was not owned by someone uh, that was a celebrity, what modifications would have to be removed? So there, there, there was um, some home addition, I think, believe it was a one bedroom addition that was done to the front and also some additions to the home along the rear of the um, property. So due to those changes, um, the home is not in its original state. Um, and since it's not in its original state, um, the homeowners are requesting to apply for historic designation based solely on its connection to Jimmy Hines. There's um, a variety of different categories that could qualify a home for historic designation. Architecture is the most common one. The architects um, are also another one too, just based on the, the home designs. But in this case here, um, the homeowners, um, after discussing with staff, felt it was more appropriate to move forward with solely the um, designation based on the um, celebrity um, status of the previous homeowner. Okay, great. And they'll be able to benefit also from the tax benefits? Yes, so yes. It? There's there's other um, homes in the city. For example, the one we have on Thompson Road that was previously owned by Red Skelton, uh, where uh, property owners have Mills Act contracts with those. Okay, great. Thank you. Very good. Are we all in consent that this is a historic mm -hmm. designation then, right? Yes. All right, then we're going to go next to a motion, which I will make that the City Council adopt resolution number 2022 next in order, approving the designation of the residence located at 39905 Morning Springs Road as a historic resource pursuant to Rancho Mirage Municipal Code Chapter 15-27. And I'll second that. Thank you, Iris. Please vote. There you go. Motion carries 4-0. Thank you. Appreciate it. Congratulations. And next we're moving to the uh, action calendar. And I'm going to turn this over to Kofi, Administrative Service Director, to present staff report. Thank you, Mayor. Good afternoon, Council. So this item is the first um, step in the city standard process for the annexation of developments within the city's jurisdiction. The second and final step will be considered at the November 17, 2022 council meeting. So within the city of Rancho Mirage, we have um, CFD number one, Community Facilities District number one. And this Community Facilities District was formed to provide funding for police and fire um, services. And so with new developments that come in within the city, these developments as a condition of approval are required to annex into CFD number one um, for annual assessments to fund public safety. So at this point, I'll request that um, the aerial for this project be brought up. Okay, thank you. So as indicated on the screen, um, bordered by the red rectangle, the territory proposed for annexation is located at the southwest corner of Ginger Rogers Road and Via Josefina and comprises of one parcel totaling approximately 5.04 acres. The project is slated to subdivide a single parcel into four residential parcels. TPM 38106 was approved by the Planning Commission on November 10, 2021 and has a condition of approval number 16 to annex into CFD number one. In accordance with this condition of approval, the owner of the annexed territory submitted a petition for annexation requesting the city council, <coughs> excuse me, requesting the city council initiate annexation proceedings to the annexed territory into the district and to provide expedited approval of the annexation and the levy of special tax. Approval of the resolution would allow the city to accept the petition as submitted by the owner, consent to, levy, uh, consent to the levy upon the annexed territory, allow a shortening of time for the special election, accept and preliminarily approve the annexation map and direct staff, the city clerk to record the map, and also establish a date and time for a public hearing on the annexation and the levy of special tax. That concludes my presentation. I'll be happy to answer any questions you may have. Thank you, Kofi. Chrissy. 
Thank you, Mayor. So now's the time for public comments on this item. I did not receive, <clears throat> excuse me, any speaker cards. Anyone participating remotely can press star nine or raise hand to indicate you'd like to speak. And we have no speakers. Very good, then we can go to council comments. Anybody? So Kofi, basically, I think we talked about this the other day. It's going from, from one big block in one price down to being split into four separate on their own. Correct. Basically, that's it, right? Yes. Very good. Anybody else? All right, with that, I'll call for motion, please. A motion. Thank you, Iris. Thank you. Uh, I move that the City Council adopt resolution number 2022, next in order, declaring the city's intention to annex territory to community facilities district number one and to levy a special tax therein for additional police and fire services, preliminarily approved a map of the area proposed to be annexed, and schedule a public hearing to consider the annexation and the levy of the special tax for annexation number 189. I'll second that. We have a second. Please vote. Motion carries 4-0. Very good. Next on the agenda is special event case number SE22-0022, consideration of approving a firework display at the club at Morningside, 39033 Morningside Drive, on November the 12th, 2022. Pilar, it's yours. Thank you, Mayor Townsend, and good afternoon, Council Members. I have for your consideration special event permit case number SE22-0022, a request for a five-minute fireworks display at the club at Morningside. In 2016, Ordinance Number 1106 amended the Rancho Mirage Municipal Code regarding the permitting requirements for fireworks displays and added a prohibition against salute-style fireworks and established fines for noncompliance. Artisan Events and Decor Incorporated is requesting approval for a fireworks display at the Club at Morningside scheduled for 8.30 p.m. on Saturday, November 12, 2022, in conjunction with their annual club opening reception. The fireworks firing site requires a 125 foot clearance radius for safety reasons. The fireworks firing site will be located approximately 250 feet southwest of the clubhouse terrace. The nearest residence is located over 500 feet from the firing site. The fireworks show is anticipated to last for approximately five minutes and the applicant has provided the city with the application requirements per the ordinance. Over 2,000 mailing notices were sent out to property owners within a one-mile radius on September 21st, 2022, 15 days prior to the set public hearing date. Staff has received three emails and one voicemail in opposition and one email in support. These have been provided to council prior to the meeting. Staff recommends that the City Council approve a request by Artisan Events and Decor Incorporated for a five-minute fireworks display at the club at Morningside scheduled for 8.30 p.m. on Saturday, November 12, 2022. This concludes my presentation. Staff would be happy to answer any questions. Thank you. Thank you, Pilar. Chrissy? Thank you. If you're participating remotely and you'd like to make any public comments, please press star nine on your phone or raise hand on Zoom. I do have one speaker card, Brad Anderson. Thank you again, Brad Anderson, City of Ransom Mirage. <clears throat> I'm sorry. I'm in first support of this. I think it's a great thing and they should do it. Uh, I know there's some negative comments uh, a few years ago concerning pollution and noise and and veterans and animers and and i just adopted a dog uh, riverside county so i don't know how he's going to react but uh but he's alive which he would have been if i did adopt him so i'm i'm willing to put up with it i live within the region and um and i morningside is uh one of the greatest or one of the one of the best country clubs in the valley and it's in the city of ranch Mirage, and i'm in support thank you thank you brad and that is the last speaker. Very good. We will go to uh, council comments. And I'll just say that Morningside through the years has had several of these events. Uh, and uh, they've all been handled well. 
and uh, the residents have accepted it and there has been really no problems from those so I see no problem with this one either council comment anybody I have a comment in fact I would like to read a, a short segment a couple of paragraphs of a letter that we all received and uh, it this starts out with, uh, to the mayor and city council, I want to thank you for the letter sent last week regarding Morningside Country Club's request for a fireworks permit. This is the first time the community has had the opportunity to weigh in as far as I recall, and I'm grateful for the opportunity to do so. These surrounding neighborhoods have to tolerate this every year without prior notification. Frankly, I don't understand the purpose of the fireworks, nor do I think they should be tolerated. We have public fireworks on July 4th at Agua Caliente to celebrate our nation's independence, which should be sufficient for this small community. I would like to see a total ban of fireworks other than the 4th of July display in our community. I am wholeheartedly against the request for this permit, a five minute fireworks display to welcome snowbirds back to our community is frivolous, dangerous and terrifying for our pets. Uh, and I know there was one letter that was in favor of it also. Um, and my own personal comments are that um, no one loves a party more than I do. I, I like celebrations. I think we should celebrate everything. Um, one of the problems is the pets. And although I don't have a pet any longer, I know what we went through every time there was a thunderstorm or fireworks from our neighbors or fireworks in the neighborhoods. Uh, it was not only terrifying for the animal, but it was so sad and heartbreaking for, the, for us. Uh, we had a little dog that was 10 pounds. She didn't know where to hide. She would jump up on our bed, drop down on the bed, uh, jump off the bed, run in the other room, run back. Um, at one point, we finally realized that when this happened, we would have to um, put on a, a towel on our bed. She would sit on the towel. She couldn't lie down because she was so frightened. She just panted and drooled all over the towel. She, as I say, there was no place for her to hide. Um, it is pathetic when you see this happen. Um, sometimes in a lightning storm, and the thunder, you have no choice. You do what you have to to protect your animal and make, give them comfort. But for some people I've spoken with in the past years, they've told me that they take their pet, they would find one of the interior rooms of their house, they turn on the television or the radio or some loud music because they don't know what else to do. Um, I don't know if I think they're wonderful, they're beautiful having fireworks. I love watching them every 4th of July because they're all over the valley. But for a country club to want to welcome back people, I think there are wonderful ways of doing it other than having fireworks, especially when it is so terrifying for some animals, not all, but certainly some. And I experienced it firsthand. I don't know if it accomplishes anything to have fireworks other than it's pretty. Uh, but it does cause the needless suffering of pets and their owners. So from my own personal experiences, uh, I think even one minute of fireworks and the explosions and the noise that they cause is too much, and I will certainly um, be voting against this. Thank you. Thank you. Any more comments? I do have a question. Um, I wonder if staff can uh, tell us uh, for how many years has Morningside uh, have been approved to conduct this uh, fireworks display? I don't think this is the first time. I think that it's possible that we've approved this multiple times over multiple years. Is that correct? The most recent approval was back in 2019 under the, the new ordinance. Uh, there might have been previous approvals of it, but it wasn't under the new ordinance. Okay. And then presumably it may not have been requested the last couple of years due to COVID. Correct. Right. Okay. So we have approved it in the past? Yes, yes we have. Yes. Okay. All right, well, I'm sensitive to Iris's comments uh, about um, concerns with respect to fireworks, pets, uh, and so on. And um, the uh, message that uh, Iris read to us was uh, authored by Suzanne Matthews, who's pretty well known 
a member at Thunderbird Country Club and sat for a couple of years on our planning commission. Um, so uh, uh, her thoughts uh, we ought to take to heart. Uh, and all of the folks who are concerned about their pets, we ought to take their thoughts to heart. I do plan to vote for this, so I understand your concerns, uh, Iris, and, um, and I'm concerned as well. Uh, I would suggest that it might be wise for the uh, members at Morningside to give consideration to some alternate form of celebration in the future. But uh, for this year, I do intend to vote yes on this measure, on this, uh, this request. Thank you. Thank you, Steve. Then with that, I will call for a motion. Uh, I have a comment. Um, All right, Ted. If you would, Mayor. Um, likewise, I am, not, uh, I am not generally in favor of the fireworks. Uh, I have been a, a pet owner, a multiple pet owner, for many years, not at the present time. Um, I'm not in favor of it. Um, mainly because of the animals. Um, I feel that there are other ways to celebrate. I also don't want to be hypocritical uh, because the city does support the fireworks display, which is for a national holiday on July 4th. And um, we, uh, we participate with the Agua Caliente a tribe in the celebration. Uh, one, of, one of the reasons that I'm going to vote yes this time, and I'm going to vote yes reluctantly, is for two reasons. Uh, number one is that I believe planning has gone uh, to a, a great extent in getting approval, that they have sent out notices uh, to roughly a mile radius uh, from, uh, uh, for the area. In addition to that, they uh, sent notices to 2,000 uh, homeowners uh, and got back, you know, very few uh, negatives. Even though it's an overwhelming support, I still don't like the idea of fireworks. And uh, even though, again, I, I say that it's limited to five minutes, I wish it was three minutes, to be honest with you. Um, I would say that if it came before me in the future, I would be voting against fireworks. But in this case, because of the extent to which planning went, uh, and I think they were very thorough, and I respect uh, Suzanne Matthews as a friend. I understand where she's coming from, uh, but regardless, I'm going to support this particular request um, with the caveat that it would be hard for me to get, uh, to get another positive vote out of me for future fireworks displays. Thank you, Mayor. Yes. Thank you, Ted. Iris? And as an additional comment, um, obviously this is going to pass, but I hope in the future that with the new commissioners, the, the new council members that come on the council, they will give great consideration to the neighbors. Even though people may not complain, it doesn't mean that they're not experiencing discomfort. And fortunately, it's only one country club at this point. Um, if 10 or 20 country clubs wanted to do the same thing, what would we do then? Would we approve all of them just because it's a nice thing to do and they've done it in the past, or maybe they haven't done it in the past, but I think that um, our neighbors come first and certainly the welfare and the health of their pets are very important. So I hope that in the future, this will be something that a staff will will um, feel strongly about and um, have a different recommendation. Thank you. Thank you, Iris. With that, I will call for a motion. All right, I will make the motion that the City Council approve a request by Artisan Events and Decor Incorporated for a five-minute fireworks display at the club at Morningside scheduled for 8.30 p.m. on Saturday, November 12th, 2022. I'll second. Thank you. I have a second. Please vote. 
<clears throat> motion carries 3-1 with Smotrich voting no. All right, next on the agenda is number nine. Consider allocation additional funds to the turf rebate program in partnership with Coachella Valley Water District and Jessica is going to give it to us. Hi, Jesse. Hi. Thank you, Mr. Mayor, and good afternoon, members of City Council. This next item that we have for Council's consideration is an update on the turf rebate program, as well as a request for an additional allocation of funds to this program. The City of Ranch Marsh has long supported the reduction of water usage and has previously run two prior turf rebate programs in 2011 and in 2016. And most recently, Council approved the current rebate program on July 7th of this year with an initial budget of 500,000. Since then, additional funds have been allocated, bringing the total to date to 2 million. The current program provides a matching rebate of $3 per square foot for all residential Rancho Mirage CVWD turf conversion rebate projects through a partnership with CVWD, providing our residents a total of $6 per square foot per project for living turf removal. It provides a dollar per square foot for all commercial HOA projects for a total of $4 per square foot. In addition, a direct rebate of up to $6,000 is available upon completion of any HOA commercial projects that are required by the city to utilize a landscape architect. The current program has really exceeded all expectations with over 850,000 square feet of projects submitted to date. The unanticipated demand of pending projects has placed a reserve on the initially allocated residential budget. It is now proposed that council consider allocating an additional 500,000 to the Ranch Mirage Turf Rebate Program. If approved, this would bring the total to 2.5 million and would result in over 1.2 million square feet of living turf to be removed and replaced with drought tolerant landscaping. Within the original staff report that is there before council now, it was proposed for this request to be split between both residential and HOA commercial. However, due to the high demand on the residential pro program, staff is now requesting that if approved, the council allocate the entire 500,000 to residential projects at the current matching $3 per square foot rebate. Um, in addition, I do want to thank CVWD for their continued partnership. They have been very easy to work with and great. Victoria was here earlier today, but she did have to leave. Um, but they have been very great in answering everyone's questions, getting projects through quickly. And so I do just want to thank their staff there for um, just being really good partners on this program. This concludes my presentation, and I'd be happy to address any questions. Thank you very much. Mayor, if I could just yes, add, add to this, uh, Jessica, thank you for that. Um, you know, the thing to take a note to, this program has been so successful and we're right in the middle of overseeding season. So, uh, you know, for a program like this on the residential side, there still are monies in the commercial uh, and HOA side, but you're right in the point where people are, you know, scalping their lawns, not watering their lawns. So this would not be a great time for this program to end right in the middle of overseeding season. So that's another point in addition to all the great points uh, to consider when, uh, when reviewing this, uh, this motion. Thank you, Gabe. Good points. Chrissy. Yes, if anyone would like to speak on this item, if you're participating remotely, please press star nine on your phone or raise hand on Zoom. I have one speaker card, Brad Anderson. Thank you again, Brad Anderson, City of Ranch Mirage. I, I, at this point, I'm opposed to this. I think it's uh, it's uh, not squandering, but uh, the city resources should be uh, allocated to other issues uh, because I've written uh, a statement to one of these allotments that you had. I think this is probably third or fourth one. Uh, and and I know the city is very wasteful on the mediums and the watering and excessive watering, I guess. And I think the city should really focus on that. And and I think it's a great time to end this program right now and maybe do it next year. Uh, uh, I just uh, I just think the resources should be spent wisely, and people will do the right thing. Uh, and uh, have native landscape if the city leaves them alone. <laughs> and that's it. Thank you. Thank you, Brad. Jessica, does this just run run out when it's over? There's no like uh, next year on the June this something it's over. 
It just runs, right? So complete it. It would just run, and, and, and I believe at this point, this would be the last allocation staff would recommend to council unless council wanted to continue this program. Um, but really, it's at council's discretion when this program would end. Very good. Thank you. Council comments? Anybody? Yeah, I'll comment that I think that um, it's outstanding that we have the opportunity to do this. Uh, and it's also the fact that we have the resources available to do it. Uh, it shows great leadership uh, for not only our city, but the entire valley. And I can tell you this, that we, uh, we set the tone because I know of a minimum of one other city uh, that basically has said at their council meeting uh, that we want to copy what Rancho Mirage has done regarding the turf replacement program. Uh, not that that is a validation. I think that our validation comes from the fact uh, that we recognize our responsibility and are happy to meet it. So I look forward to uh, voting in favor of this. Thank you, Mayor. Thank you, Ted. Steve. Uh, yes, Mr. Mayor, I do have a couple of questions. Jessica, um, do you have some statistics available that you can share with us about the use of this program up to now? How much have we spent? How many residences have taken advantage of it? How many businesses have taken advantage of it? And if we approve an additional $500,000, based on the current run rate, what's your guesstimate as to how long it will take us to run through that $500,000? So at this point, over 850,000 square feet of turf have been removed. The city has allocated um, or reserved about 1.8 million of the current allocated budget with the remaining amount at um, the HOA commercial. There is no longer any funds for the residential portion of this program without an additional allocation. Um, there have been over 175 residential applications received and approved. There are additional ones that have been received, but that have not been reviewed and approved by CBWD yet. There have been 53 commercial HOA. And at the current run rate, I would say if this was allocated by council, these funds would be expended by the end of the month. And this program would then end unless additional funds were allocated. Okay. So um, I guess it's fair to say that this has been a remarkably successful program with the uh, citizens, with the homeowners, and with the businesses in this city. I get a lot of positive calls, yes. Okay. Great. Okay. Um, I think what we're going to discover uh, in a presentation from Joseph pretty soon is that uh, we will have funds available for, uh, for extension of a program like this, and it will be relatively easy for us to afford it. I think this is the right time for us to uh, extend a program like this. It sends the right message to this community about conservation uh, when the time is appropriate based on uh, all that we hear from the state of California and from the CBWD about con conservation and also based on uh, something that um, our uh, uh, acting city manager just said a few moments ago about the fact that we're uh, entering um, uh, turf conversion time frame. And so it's going to be on people's minds uh, over the next month or so. I think this is a very appropriate thing for us to do, and I think it's very timely, and I intend to vote in favor of this measure. Thank you, Steve. Jesse, there, are, there is a waiting list already, isn't there, from the past go around? So the residential funds have run out, and there is currently a wait list of about um, $90,000 in projects that have been reviewed and approved by CBWD, but that would not be city matched without additional funds from the city. Very good. Well, it just shows, like uh, Steve just said, and what we're all saying, it's a great program. It's a great program, and people are really looking forward to it. So I think we're all doing the right thing with that. So with that, if everybody's through with comments... I was just going to add that um, timing is everything, and the fact that Rancho Mirage has always been a pace setter. We have always set a certain standard, and we've always uh, sometimes dragged some other cities into things that might not have been in favor of it. But this is something that the whole state is experiencing, and the whole West Coast, and uh, timing couldn't be better, and the fact that we do have the resources, and we can... Uh, encourage other cities around us to maybe follow suit uh, really makes uh, the Coachella Valley um, certainly a more d appealing place when we see that uh, neighbors are trying to do the best they can for conservation. 
So we're lucky we can do it, and I'm thrilled we're going to hopefully uh, approve it. Thank you, Iris. Mr. Mayor, may I make the motion? Yes, you may. I move that the City Council approve a modification to the Rancher Mirage Turf Rebate Program in partnership with the Coachella Valley Water District and approve uh, and approval of an additional $500,000 for a total of $2.5 million allocation to the program and authorize the city manager or designee, I guess that'll be you, Mr. Acting City Manager, uh, <laughs> to take all further actions to implement the same, including approving and executing all associated agreements approved as to form by the city attorney. I'll second that. Please vote. Mm -hmm. Motion carries 4-0. Very good. Good program. Next on the agenda is number 10, fiscal year 2021-22, summary and year-end budget adjustments by Joseph Carpenter, Senior Manager, Finance and Human Resources, to present the staff report. Did you like that title? I did. Thank you, Mr. Very Mayor. Good. <laughs> good afternoon, members of the City Council. Today's presentation will focus primarily on a review of the general fund operating and non-operating or capital budget versus actual, actual results for fiscal year 2021-2022. The action you take this afternoon to amend the budget as requested in the staff report will serve as the mechanism to comply with the, the city's budgeting policy for financial reporting purposes. General Fund Summary provides a high-level summary of the operating and non-operating revenues and expenditures of the General Fund. The table currently shown on your screen displays the fiscal year 21-22 amended budget, year-end actuals, and the calculated difference between the two. If you focus your attention on the actual column, you will find for the fiscal year, the General Fund had operating revenues of $35.9 million, an increase of 24% from the prior year and expenditures of $26.8 million for an operating surplus of just over $9.1 million. The general fund had non-operating or capital revenues of approximately $3 million, $2.2 million of which was coronavirus state and local fiscal recovery funds, and expenditures of $4.5 million for a non-operating deficit of $1.5 million. The next two slides in this presentation will detail the budget to actual variance for operating revenue and expenditures. The table on slide three highlights the $6.2 million increase in actual recognized revenue versus budgeted revenue for the fiscal year. Operating revenue was higher than anticipated due primarily to the recovery from the pandemic by the tourism industry and an active real estate market. As displayed on the table, actual revenue exceeded budgeted revenue by $1.3 million for transient occupancy tax, $1.1 million for sales tax, $1.1 million for the transfer from Community Facilities District Number 1, $558,000 for development-related permits, and the remaining 30-plus revenue sources experienced a combined increase of approximately $1.9 million. General fund operating expenditures are broken down into three object levels, personnel, which includes salaries and benefits, operations and maintenance, and department equipment. The table on slide four highlights the approximately $1.6 million reduction in actual versus budgeted expenditures for the fiscal year. At an object level, personnel was $368,000 under budget, operations and maintenance was $1.2 million under budget, and department equipment items were over budget by a little over $1,000. The decrease in operating expenditures was primarily attributed to a decrease in the anticipated subsidy to the fire fund, which was caused by increases in revenue from CFD number one, the community services district, and the medical insurance billing program. Please note, expenditures that exceeded their budget for the fiscal year and require amendments to the budget to maintain compliance with the city's budgeting policy can be found on attachment two of the staff report. To recap, as mentioned earlier and shown on slide two, for fiscal year 21-22, the city had a $9.1 million operating surplus and a $1.5 million operating deficit for a total surplus of $7.6 million. In the first column along the bottom of slide five, 
you will see that the city started this fiscal year with approximately $62 million in general fund reserves. And after accounting for the $7.6 million increase in reserves for the fiscal year, outlined in green on your screen, the city will end the fiscal year with approximately $70 million in general fund reserves. It should be noted that for fiscal year 19, the most recent fiscal year not impacted by the pandemic, the general fund had approximately $72 million in reserves. During the two pandemic impacted fiscal years, the city spent about 10 million of its reserves. The city's general fund reserves are currently categorized in seven categories. Unassigned fund balance, $12.6 million, is money that has not been committed for specific use and is available for any purpose. Funds in the city's six remaining reserve accounts have a specific commitment and can only be used for that purpose unless changed by the city council. The capital improvement reserve is for land, equipment replacement, information technology equipment and software, and facility and infrastructure renovations and upgrades. The disaster recovery reserve is set aside to cover costs and losses associated with a natural disaster that requires activation of the city's emergency operating center. The economic development reserve is to be used to continue the economic development efforts of the former redevelopment agency. The library reserve is set aside for future needs of the Ranch Mirage Library and Observatory. The prudent reserve is set aside for future revenue shortfalls caused by economic conditions. And lastly, the public safety reserve is set aside for police, fire, medical services equipment, and capital needs that may arise in the future. Staff would like to amend two of the budget adjustments found on Exhibit A of Resolution A, which can be found on page 10-19 of the staff report. As part of the annual audit, finance staff identified items from PERMA, the city's workers' compensation and general liability insurer, that required entry into the city's financial system. These entries caused a change to the requested budget adjustments. Staff is requesting that the budget adjustment for general government salaries and benefits be changed from $276,503 to $299,556, an increase of $23,053. And the budget adjustment for general government operations and maintenance be changed from $678,000 $671 to $682,328, an increase of $3,657. I ask that the City Council consider adoption of resolutions A through C as amended during this presentation. Thank you for your time and consideration this afternoon. Staff is available to answer any questions. Very good, Joseph. Wonderful report. And you did that all by yourself, right? You brought all that money in. Just where'd you find it? <laughs> Who, who worked with you with this on your staff? Uh, this is a, a great team effort by everyone in the finance department. Uh, a lot of us don't get recognized. You know, That's why I'm recognizing. We're, we're upstairs, hidden. We, we do our best to work in silence and just do our best to, to complete everything we can in as timely in a manner as we can. That's one of our goals is to get financials issued as quickly as possible, but as accurately as possible as well. Well, tell everybody, you know, they have our kudos and our support and very proud of all of you on that staff. I sure will. Thank you. With that, Chrissy, opened up for. Thank you. If anyone would like to speak on this item and you are participating remotely, please press star nine on your phone or raise hand on Zoom. I did not receive any speaker cards and no one on Zoom wishing to speak. So we're good to go. So next, we're on call for council comments. Which end? Steve. So uh, just a couple of questions, just to be absolutely sh sure that everyone understands what, the, uh, what, the, what a couple of fairly simple numbers are. So the budget surplus for the fiscal year ended June 30th, 2022, is $7.6 million. Correct. And the total reserve account for the city of Rancho Mirage and the various accounts uh, increases now to just a little over $70 million. Correct. So we have recaptured not quite all, but almost all of the roughly $10 million that we spent to support our businesses and the residents of this city during COVID-19 efforts. Correct. Okay. Um, I just wanted to point that out. 
uh, because it speaks to the remarkable financial strength of this city. Uh, it speaks to how well managed this city is. It does speak to what are we going to do with some of that money, and we'll talk again about that in a couple of minutes on the next item that's going to come to the agenda. But I simply wanted to point that out to the people of this city that um, uh, we're in great shape. And uh, thank you to Joseph. Thank you to the team. Uh, thank you to everyone on staff uh, who's, uh, who's worked hard to recover uh, from the, the funds that we were able to set aside and spend during uh, the last couple of years of COVID. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Absolutely, Steve. And the great plate program, a couple of million dollars and everything else that we have done, it, it, I, I agree that uh, what this city can do and does do is remarkable. And uh, yeah, my kudos to everybody. Anybody over here, Iris? Just, uh, just to confirm that uh, FEMA has reimbursed us for all of our Great Plates programming, and uh, we're all set with them. Uh, we have submitted our reimbursements. We actually have not received them yet. We anticipate receiving the first batch of reimbursements in this fiscal year and fiscal year 23. Okay. So there's more money to come, right? <laughs> yes. Wow. Yes. Okay, so we will be getting maybe in a little bit here and a little bit there from them and as they can budget for repayment. Correct. Okay, sounds great. Thank you. Ted? Uh, Steve, thank you for pointing out, you know, making your points regarding the, the funds. I think the other thing that we have to look at is many times that you'll say, okay, uh, we have, give or take, $70 million in reserves. You want to look at how that $70 million is allocated. You want to look at the categories that, that basically they're assigned to, whether it be public safety, whether it be capital improvements, et cetera. In other words, that, that $70 million isn't just sitting in an account and says, okay, look, you know, we're fat. Every one of those dollars is allocated for a specific purpose, and that's what we focus on. And when somebody says, what are you using the money for? You want to point out the allocation in those various categories. So that's why I think we all can be, you know, very proud of the results. Thanks. Very good. Appreciate that. And then with that, we will ask for a motion. A well, I'll be happy to do that. Please do, Ted. Uh, I'll make a motion that the City Council of the City of Rancho Mirage and the Board of Directors for the City of Rancho Mirage Housing Authority and City of Rancho Mirage Community Services District adopt the resolutions identified as resolutions A through C. A, resolution number 2022, next in order, amending the fiscal year 2021-22 budget. B. Resolution number 2022, HA next in order, amending the fiscal year 2021 22 budget, and C, resolution number 2022, CSD next in order, amending the fiscal year 2021 22 budget. I'll second. Very good. Please vote. Motion carries 4 0. <clears throat> Congratulations. Thank you, Joseph. Thank you. All right, last on this agenda is number 11, considering it mending contract with Riverside County Sheriff's Department, and Mr. Gabe Cotting will do the honors. Thank you, Mr. Mayor and City Council. So, as you know, the City Council places a high priority on ensuring the highest quality public safety to our community. Police protection in Rancho Mirage is provided on a service contract basis for the, with the Riverside County Sheriff's Department. Our current agreement went into effect on July 1st, 2021, and it's a five-year contract that is effective until June 30th, 2026. Over the years, the city and the Riverside County Sheriff's Department have forged a proactive partnership. Recently, city staff, Lieutenant Sean Myers, and the subcommittee, which consisted of, of, of Mayor uh, Townsend and Councilmember Downs, met to review current service levels. The subcommittee is recommending today that increasing our patrol hours to 96 and adding an additional motorcycle deputy. As you will see in the detailed staff report, Rancho Mirage has always maintained an above average coverage for residents and guests. For example, the, common, the commonly accepted ratio of number of sworn officers per 1,000 residents 
is, is 1 to 1,000. The city's current ratio is between 1.6 and 1.7 sworn officers per 1,000 residents. Uh, and by adding the additional hours to 96 and the motorcycle deputy, Ranch Mirage ratio to sworn officers will increase to almost two per 1,000. Although the city is concerned with the cost increases in our contract rates, we have always maintained a high level of service. The city council also has an established $10 million public service, public safety reserve to ensure public safety services are maintained at the highest level of services. The fiscal impact here, uh, the, annual, the annualized cost for adding a, uh, an additional motorcycle deputy will be approximately 385,000, plus the cost of any specialized equipment. The annualized cost for increasing the daily patrol hours to 96 hours would be approximately 1.1 million for a combined annualized cost of 1.5 million, which comes in a little handy since we've got a, a massive surplus for this year. Uh, staff will incorporate the proposed changes into the mid-year budget adjustments if this proposal is approved by the city council. Um, that, uh, that ends my uh, presentation and available to answer any questions. Very good, thank you. Any questions of Gabe right now? All right, I'm going to go to introducing Lieutenant Myers. And there he is. <clears throat> Here's all the information, right? <laughs> you guys have the information. Hi, buddy boy. Mayor, City Council, staff, thank you for having me here today. Um, and to talk to you on this very important topic. Uh, first, I would like to commend staff and council on considering this action. I'm very proud to work with a city who regards public safety as an important service. You know, we're in a time where we're seeing many cities making or considering reductions in public safety budgets. However, this council has always remained proactive in providing the best service to its residents, whether by adding increased levels of service or securing advanced technology so we could carry out our duties better. Uh, my conversations with city staff have never been conversations as to what cuts we should make to public safety, but it's always been on how we can improve and better public safety services for the city. So if passed, I look forward to implementing these added services and continuing our great partnership. Thank you. Very, very, very good. Thank you very much. Um, I'm gonna go off um, track here and open it up right now to councilman comments. Steve. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. And uh, thank you, Lieutenant Myers, for being here. Thank you. Uh, I, I would like to just uh, ask you a question to make sure that we underscore in a fairly simple way what this change means to the, I'm sorry. Is that good? Yeah, sorry right. about that. I just want to ask you to underscore in a, in a fairly simple and direct couple of numbers way so that the public understands exactly what this means in terms of sworn officer coverage. And isn't it just this simple? If we approve this uh, measure today, we will move from roughly 35 sworn officers protecting this city to 39 sworn officers. So it'll be roughly a little over a 10% or about a 10% increase uh, in coverage for this city. Is it just that simple? That's correct. Okay. And another, I think, important number that uh, I'd like to underscore is something that uh, Gabe mentioned in his staff report, which is that the a standard for the county of Riverside, if I'm correct about this, it's one sworn officer per thousand residents. That's a benchmark the sheriff's department right. uses. That's correct, yeah. And so up to now, uh, or at least the current budget in the city of Rancho Mirage allows you to put about 1.7 sworn officers per thousand residents on the streets, correct? That's correct. And if we approve this measure, we go up to almost two. Yes, I believe 2.04, I think is what. So we will be significantly above the, uh, the, the basic average number that's established by the Board of Supervisors in the County of Riverside. That's correct. Okay. Uh, and one last issue that I think is important for us all to bear in mind, there's a very good reason for us to be overstaffed, and it is because this city's population mm -hmm. fluctuates dramatically during the season. We're um, highly um, reliant upon our seasonal visitor traffic in this city. And so where we might have about 18,000 or so residents year-round, 
That number increases to somewhere around 30-ish, maybe a little over 30,000 in the season, correct? Right. And so as a result, what we need to give you is the resources to make sure that we, when we have that overpopulation as a result of our seasonality, that you've got the ability to provide uh, public safety to this community. And this uh, recommendation does exactly that. Is that correct? That's correct. Thank you, Sean. I appreciate your being here today. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Very good. I, I will. And to dovetape off of what uh, Steve was saying on the meetings that we had, uh, looking forward to not only the increase in seasonal, but the increases of being built out with Cortina and everything that's on the books. So this city is looking long range right. and not waiting to react, you know, knee jerk, but doing it now. And I think that's what uh, we all agreed on, right? Yes, it is, and you've always done that. Yeah. Very good. Thank you. you may I add sure. one more item? Based on the uh, presentation we just had from Joseph, it looks to me like we can probably afford this. <laughs> <laughs> and we haven't got all that money from the state on the Great Plates program yet, so that's we're right. doing pretty good. That's right. I'm going to go right now. I, if you just kind of stay for a minute, sure. because I'm doing this backwards here. Uh, we're going to go to uh, public comments, all right? And then we'll go to council comments to finish it up. Perfect. Chris? Thank you. If anyone would like to speak on this item, if you're participating via Zoom, please press star 9 on your phone or raise hand on Zoom. I did not receive any speaker cards. Oh, we have someone in the audience who would like to speak. Come on up. Please state your name. Hello. Hi, I'm Brad Anderson, City of Ransom Mirage. Uh, I can just only commend... Uh, Riverside County uh, Sheriff's Department for what they do to our city, uh, in our city, because um, I think uh, if you're come, uh, bottom line is crime may be committed, but they will catch you. So, <laughs> but anyway, uh, I, uh, my only reservation is, of course, the, the, um, the, the, increased cost of the motorcycle and I just learned about this today so I would I, I'm opposed to this at this time I would like to see the new counselor uh, when it comes in uh, address this item in a few months uh, because I think uh, this is something that the new counselor should look at versus this counselor thank you that's the only speaker that it? The last speaker, yes. Very good. Now we'll go to council comments. Ted. Thank you. Um, I think the single biggest responsibility uh, of a council member is public safety. I think that's what our duty is, and I think that's what our constituents uh, want us to do. You know, the old expression, uh, Willie Sutton says that... Uh, you know, the reason he robs banks is that's where the money is. Well, uh, Rancho Mirage has a higher than normal income level for its recipients, for its residents. And therefore, uh, public safety becomes all the more important because you're dealing with a certain economic strata uh, that has to be protected. And I think that... Uh, the Sheriff's Department, uh, Lieutenant Myers, who is a good friend as well, and his team do a fabulous job. And I, for one, am so darn proud that we have the opportunity to increase the coverage. And so I look forward to uh, uh, pushing my, uh, my button and confirm this uh, increase. Thank you, uh, Lieutenant. Thank you, Mayor. Iris. Well, when Ted talks about increased coverage, obviously it's not going to end right here. Uh, it, there's going to be more increased coverage as we move forward because we just talked about the 82 homes that uh, are going to be built. We've got the 1,700 Cotino uh, residences. We've got the finishing up of the Dell Webb complex. Uh, there's lots of other developments that are going to take place as we do our building out. And then there's going to be the hotels that are going to be in Catino also. So, yes, we do increase uh, in the high season to about 35,000, I was told, a couple of years ago. Um, but what is also important to have this, uh, the, the reserve, 
is when the unexpected happens, like the um, any kind of disaster that we might encounter, uh, as if, if we have, God forbid, a, a major earthquake, uh, if we have another pandemic. You know, it, these are all the important reasons why we need to have reserves. But what's so nice is that someone like um, Sean here and all of his colleagues are so willing to be helpful anytime, day or night. Um, would they want to go out and speak to residents and, and developments anytime there is a problem or if there's questions that need to be answered uh, when people have problems that what they may think are minor problems and they say, oh, I don't want to call the police, you know, it's just, you know, it's just a minor thing. So somebody broke into my mailbox or, or my left my garage open and I shouldn't have and something was taken. There are ways that people can further protect themselves and their developments and their neighborhoods. And our wonderful um, sheriff's department is always there to be helpful. And if you do have problems or you do have concerns or you do want to have a, a, a neighborhood get together, please don't hesitate to call on, on your uh, sheriff's department. They're more than glad to come out and answer whatever questions. And we're just so lucky to have you and, and to be able to have the reserves for our increased development. So thank you again and just stay safe. <laughs> Thank you, Iris. One comment. Go ahead. So, Mayor, I just wanted to underscore one one thing. Uh, I know in the years that I've been here, I've uh, witnessed our city manager. You probably wouldn't find somebody who's more passionate about our uh, our um, public safety uh, officials. In fact, rarely have I ever, if we have a lunch meeting or something, anytime he's in line somewhere and he sees uh, an officer, he'll go run and pay for their meal and. And, uh, and so I, I know in our discussions uh, leading up to this, he wanted to underscore, you know, a lot of the calls that we get at City Hall are traffic related. Um, and so by adding the motorcycle deputy, their primary focus is traffic, running red lights, speeding down 111. So adding that is a big, um, you know, so that's why you're seeing the added hours and also the added motorcycle deputy, because most of the calls that we feel, why, why are you letting people speed? Why, you know, the, the, the stoplight on Country Club? those type of things. So that empowers Lieutenant Myers and the rest of the team to be able to address those things, especially as we're entering into high season here. So I just want to underscore, uh, you know, and because Isaiah couldn't be here, um, just to underscore his, uh, all his support that he does for public safety. And then that was one point that I thought was, uh, was when we wanted to, to uh, let our residents know as well. Thank you, Gabe. And let me say that being a part of that uh, subcommittee with Isaiah and Steve, and I'm sure uh, Steve will agree with me that Isaiah really is the driving force and looking for everything that you see in this program and looking down to the future was all directed with, with him there really being a great part of it. So with that as a motion, Mr. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. I would like to make just one more point. We are giving uh, Lieutenant Meyer some work to do here because the addition of these deputies doesn't occur overnight. This takes time. Uh, the Sheriff's Department has to recruit. They've got to train, uh, and then they've got to support uh, these deputies. Uh, so this, uh, this is going to be an effort that's probably going to take uh, a year to a year and a half or so. Is that correct, Lieutenant Myers? Yes. It, if I had my magic wand that worked really well, I, I would say let's start tomorrow. But unfortunately, the way things go with recruiting, getting somebody through an academy, uh, which is six months, and then field training, uh, buying a motorcycle, getting the motorcycle out of it, it does take some time. So um, I would like to do it within a year. That's my goal or less, um, but it could take up to 18 months. Yeah. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. There we go. Now it's on. Thank you so much for being with us today. All right. I would love to make this motion. You Thank you, may. Mr. Mayor. So I uh, move that the City Council authorize the Mayor, City Manager, and City Attorney to execute an amendment to the City's law enforcement contract with the County of Riverside, increase the daily patrol hours to 96 hours a day, and to add an additional motorcycle deputy. I'll second that. And that too, and Ted is seconded. So we got seconds all over the place, so please vote. Motion carries 4-0. Very good. We're getting down to the... Uh, There you go. There you go. Thank you, Jerry. I appreciate it. 
Uh, we're going to go into closed session, and I'm going to turn this over to our wonderful city attorney, Steve Q, to summarize the closed session items. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. The city council is now going into recess into closed session, pursuant to government code section 54956.9D1, regarding the following existing litigation items. Vacation rental owners and neighbors of Rancho Mirage at all versus city of Rancho Mirage. Vacation rental, rental owners and neighbors of Rancho Mirage versus city of Rancho Mirage. Um, hometown Colony LLC, DBA, the Colony Mobile Home Park versus city of Rancho Mirage. And the last case, we don't have the name of the case specified since disclosure could jeopardize pending settlement negotiations. And those are the four items we will be considering in closed session. Very good. Mayor, um, I'm sorry, we do have a uh, public comment card on closed session. If we could just, yes, yeah, we, if we could. We have one speaker card uh, for the closed session calendar, Brad Anderson. Really? Okay. Hi, thank you again, Brad Anderson, City of Ranch Mirage. I just wanted to comment on these four items for the closed session. Uh, I'm going to just combine them, and hopefully uh, we can conclude these litigation issues sooner than later, uh, because I think the city attorney is going to be busier in the future, and maybe maybe subcontracting some help out for this person. And that's all I have. Thank you. Thank you, Brad. Now we are in closed session. We are in from closed session for the Thursday, October the 6th, 2022 City Council meeting. And I will turn this over to our city attorney. Mr. Mayor, there was no reportable action taken in closed session. Thank you very much. And with that, we will close out this City Council meeting. Thank you. <laughs>